All right, everyone, uh, we're going to start our uh, seminar today. And um, thank you, thank you again. Um, those uh, guests we have here in the classroom and um, those of you attending uh, to our Covering Environments seminars uh, through the web. Uh, so pleasure to see you again. We are really excited today. My name is Murat Kasira, and I'm the director of Controlled Environment Agriculture Center. And it's a special day. Um, we have an organic agriculture talk. We have organic produce over here. Some organic foods back there. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and we are all organic here. So really, it's it's great. So um, we have a special guest. I would like to introduce uh, our guest to you uh, shortly. Uh, before we do that, um, we had a great day today with her um, uh, touring our facilities as well as a commercial uh, greenhouse facility. So I would like to thank uh, first to uh, Rafi Gruner, our uh, Covering Environment Seminar uh, Coordinator. I would like to thank Dene Pantoja, our Program Coordinator here at CAC, and Dave Bogner, our uh, cyber uh, systems and uh, communications specialist uh, helping us with the webinar. And I would like to also thank uh, Carlos and Alfredo from Wholesome Harvest accepting us and Tio Crescentes uh, for today's uh, greenhouse tour. And uh, Stacy uh, uh, Bree uh, for the mushrooms program uh, talks and Jean uh, to help us with our facility tours. It gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, my friend and our colleague, my colleague, uh, Dr. Martin Dorais, uh, to you. Um, she's a special person. She comes to us from University of Laval, uh, Quebec, Canada. She's a professor in the Department of uh, Phytology there. And she has done extensive research in various institutions, including University of Laval, UC Davis, Wageningen University, as well as Swedish uh, University of Agricultural Sciences. I have known her for more than 15 years as a colleague and as a friend, and we have been closely working as chairs of our commissions, Organic Horticulture and Engineering under the umbrella of International Society of Horticultural Sciences, organizing symposiums or helping to organize conferences around the world. Um, Martin is a great example of the progress in research as relates to organic greenhouse horticulture. So she graciously accepted our invitation to be here today, and she will present us her work on the impact of soil and growing media, nutrition, nutrient management for plant growth and quality, biostimulants for physical chemical properties of growing media, and LED lighting in indoor agriculture systems. So a lot of good information. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Welcome and thank you and floor is yours. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, so so uh, first, thank you very much for this uh, invitation, great invitation. It's really a great pleasure to be here. And it, it's my first time in Arizona, so <laughs> I can feel the, the weather, the warm. Uh, so, um, so yes, so I will start. Um, um, so, so I, I will give you during the, the next, uh, the, during this presentation, so I will give you an overview about the organic agriculture. So the per perception, principle, and regulation that's going on in the USD and Canada. I will also present some uh, statistics about organic greenhouse vegetable worldwide, just to give you a picture of the situation. I will present the main challenge that growers have to face. The advantage of growing uh, out of the native soil, so in soilless growing system, and also I will uh, show you um, some of my research uh, um, project and results that have been conducted since 2006, I should say, that I'm full-time involved in organic uh, horticulture. And uh, so, and I will continue with uh, some future trends. So, as you know, uh, nowadays consumers' attitudes are changing. So, people are looking for organic product, local product, fresh trade product, and also low, low uh, footprint. And choice of buying organic food is also associated with the reflective consumption and cultural 
change in our country. So it's just not to have um, vegetable or fruit without pesticide. It's more than that. It's to protect uh, the future generation, protect the farm workers working in the farm, consumer resources, and also to, 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 to contribute to the mitigate the climate change that we are facing now. So it, it's not just uh, only produce um, organic or buying organic. So, and companies are responding to that. As you can see, Walmart, Costco, and a lot of companies are now offering organic products, which was not so obvious before. So, and if we look just some data from USA, and in USA, the, the last survey um, said that 83% of the US family buy organic, not every week, but they still uh, buy organic. And organic is associated with good parenting. So millennials uh, also are the largest consumer group in the United States for organic. And yeah, uh, and they are also the big buyers for everything. So, and if we consider that uh, in 15 years, 10 to 15 years, 80% of the millennials will get uh, will have child. This creates a, a, a huge uh, market for organic products. So organic vegetable and fruit uh, will extend for sure the demand for that. So, and also they, they do not associate uh, organic with, uh, with grown in the soil. So, so, so it's not bad to grow out of the soil uh, in this uh, North American uh, uh, yeah, countries. But price is also a key factor that is really uh, important. So if it's too uh, expensive, a uh, consumer uh, well, will hesitate to buy organic. So the perception of organic is before it was seen as inefficient system. And that the system that uh, need more land to produce the same yield. And it was a poor solution to the agricultural problems or the, the global um, uh, food security. But today, now, a day, it's seen as an innovative farming system. It's a market opportunity for our growers, our industry, and it can contribute also to the global food and ecosystem security. So if you look at, if we have a look at the demands uh, of the organic uh, food, we can see that this market has reached 90 billion of US dollars, which is an increase in more than four times since the last 15 years. And you can see here that US is uh, the, the, the first, the, the, the biggest, the largest uh, organic market. And it's the same trend that you can see in European country as well. So in US, if you have a look, US organic sale is 47 billion of dollars. It's increasing by 8.4% uh, over uh, 2015. And for fruit and vegetables, this market represents 15 Point six billion of US dollars, which is 40% of all organic food sales. So, but we had to produce. And if we consider that in by, um, yeah, 2050, we will be 10 billion of people in that planet, it means that we will need 3.4 billion tons of fruit and vegetables. So we need a lot of vegetables. And we have seen that conventional intensive food growing system have created a lot of problems. Degradation of natural resources, loss of biodiversity, a lot of the pesticide, uh, and also yeah, the resistance against uh, pesticide, food pesticide residue is, um, is a big issue for consumer. So, um, Consumers are now questioning the dilemma that we absolutely need pesticides uh, for farming. So according to that, um, more and more people are looking to growing uh, organically. So uh, organic uh, agriculture is uh, really uh, expanding. And here is the four principles of organic agriculture. So the principle of health, ecology, fairness, and care. So we have to 
uh, have a growing system that we uh, provide healthy soil, healthy crop, healthy people, healthy planet. And we have to make it in agroecological way to have diversity, to promote diversity, recycling, smart use of our resources. And we also have the social justice, fair trade, and ecological justice that is part of that uh, organic food. Um, uh, I will say it's not a movement. It's much more than that. It's a lifestyle. So, and for the control of environmental agriculture, you can see that there is a lot to do. So we have to develop system that will ensure high biological activity, high productivity, high quality of our product to provide food, contribute to the food security, uh, high nutrient uh, and water use efficiency, and so on. So we will have a look on later on on that topic. So now if we look at the organic farming standard. So it's a system that don't use GMO, no pesticide, no synthetic fertilizer, no grower hormone or antibiotic, and no sludge. And we, well, the, the goal is to use, the, to minimize the system input and to minimize, well, to, to have a, a low impact on the environmental uh, uh, aspect as well. So, and uh, if you look, there is 87 countries that have their own standards worldwide. And there is 280 three organic certification bodies around the world. So it's really a, a big uh, way to, to grow. In addition to that, uh, Sandra, you can have Biolon and also um, uh, Dimitar that is used uh, biodynamic standard to grow uh, organically. But I won't do it uh, in that direction um, for today. So if you look at the Canadian organic regulation, for us, it's not allowed to grow hydroponically and aeroponically as well. So we need to have um, to grow in a, a growing medium, a soil, a container system that will provide the nutrients to the plants. And we, we, we need a mineral fraction also. And it's the, the, the soil that should fill the plants. So we cannot provide um, the major nutrients by the drip irrigation system. In our system, we should add at the beginning at least 10% of the compost in the growing media. And we need at least 60 liters of growing media per square uh, meter. So this is quite different. And also, the greenhouse cultivation must be under natural lighting. So we cannot grow under plant factory because we need the full spectrum of Sun. And there is a huge debate, actually, because uh, we review our standards in Canada. And there is a lot of people who want to grow organically in plant factories. So we will see in the coming year what will happen with that. So in the US, if we compare, so it's allowed to grow organic uh, hydroponically. But in 2010, as you probably know, they, they had a recommendation that we should prohibit um, to grow hydroponic or hydroponic uh, system because uh, people um, said that it provides insufficient carbon and biology in the system, and it's not nutrient cycling, not enough nutrient cycling. But this um, recommendation has been rejected last uh, November. And it's now, it's now uh, allowed to, to, to continue to grow uh, hydroponically and also um, aquaponic as well. So now if we look at the three type of growing system for greenhouse or controlling uh, environmental agriculture. So in European country, they have to grow only in the soil. So it's not allowed to be out of the soil. In Canada, we can grow out of the soil, but we have a minimum volume of growing media that we have to, to, to respect. And it's not allowed to grow hydroponically. Uh, aquaponics is not allowed as well. And of course, uh, aeroponic and plant factory. In USA, as I just mentioned, it's allowed to grow hydroponically. 
so the, the main nutrients can come from the irrigation system and aquaponic is allowed as well and there is no minimum volume of uh, or a restriction on the, the nitrogen. So now if we have a, a quick overlook at the organic greenhouse industry worldwide, worldwide we have more than 8,000 hectares that grow um, under uh, protection cultivation which is about 1.8 percent of the total vegetable greenhouse area and is mainly located in European countries but in North America and Mexico you see Mexico uh, grow a lot of organic protected crops so, so it's and it's expanding in all the time so in USA you can see you have 186 hectares organic um, greenhouse uh, vegetables which represent 20 percent of all your um, uh, total uh, greenhouse area, which is, is, is a lot. So you have high-tech greenhouses and also low-tech greenhouses. In Canada, we only have uh, around 90 hectares located in Quebec, British Columbia, and Ontario. So now, if we look at the main challenge that organic growers have to face, so as you know, greenhouse is a high investment cost. So we need to reach high yield to be profitable. And then one of the main challenge also that they are facing is to have a high nutrient um, um, availability for the crop because greenhouse crop need about 10 times more nutrients than field crop because we grow all around the year. And to match this um, nutrient availability with the plant demands, it's a huge challenge. Also, we have to, 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 to design system that will limit the salinity of the our grain media because sometimes we have unbalanced organic fertilizer. The, the, the management of the, 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 the water, the wastewater is really important as well. The soil health problem because if we grow uh, the same crops in the same media always, uh, well, years after years, you can have disease problem. And also a challenge that uh, our growers uh, have to face is to fulfill the increasing demand by consumers who have to provide organic food and vegetable. And this we have to reach high quality and at uh, a nice price that everyone can buy organic food and vegetable. Now, if we look at the yield gap between conventional and organic, and it, there is meta-analysis that have been published during uh, the, the last year. And the gap is all, uh, it's about 20%. And this is mainly related to the fertility. Uh, the nitrogen uh, availability, it's a bottleneck for our uh, high intensive growing system like this. So now if we look at the organic greenhouse uh, uh, productivity, if we compare the organic with the conventional, we, you can see here, so according to the growing system that you grow, you can achieve the similar yield or even better yield than conventional. And if you look at Canada and USA, where you, you, you reach similar yield, this yield is most of the time out of the soil, the native soil. So now if we look at the research needs, so we have seen that fertility is really, really important. So we have to have um, to, to, to match with the plant nutrient requirement. So we, for that, we, we need to have a balanced fertilizer or organic amendment that will fulfill plant nutrient uptake. We have to promote the mineralization rate of our growing media. We also have to limit the salinization of our green media and also the emission of a greenhouse uh, gas and also the optimum irrigation because irrigation is all related to the activity of your soil and also the optimum oxygen because we think that plants need water but needs uh, oxygen as the plants need water. It's also really, really important to achieve high yield of high quality. And here is just an example that data from Netherlands grow in soil. And you can see the variability of the nitrogen availability uh, during the, the growing season. And you can have a peak like that, that it doesn't fit 
with the plant nutrient requirement. So we have conducted uh, research uh, yeah, since uh, 2006. Uh, and my team are uh, conducting research on organic soil estuary system, fertilization management, the nitrogen form, the effect on the microbial activity, uh, the nutrient availability according to the, the, the organic amendment that you provide to the crops. Uh, also, uh, if I um, uh, put or add biochar, how it will affect the green media and promote the, the activity of my soil and also all the, the, the practices, the cultural and uh, that you, what is the impact on the, the, the microbial diversity and population of my soil. So this is the, uh, an example that the system that we have developed with the industry Arnois in um, collaboration with Agriculture and Agri Food Canada and Laval University that we have developed this system we call demarcated beds. So it's out of the soil, but as you can see here, we have a lot of growing media. So we have about 120 to 180 liters per square meter. We provide fertilizer every week or be monthly. And we have really uh, active soil. We have heard warns in that. We try to limit the, the, the drain uh, the um, different for the, 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 um, the container because we want to keep our uh, nitrogen. And here you can see the type of uh, components and uh, we can find in our substrate. So it's mainly based on pea, core, polite, fiber ward, uh, sawdust, and biocharge. Uh, and you can add a different type. But the air porosity of your su substrate is a key element if you want to have healthy soil and healthy plants. So, and with that type of system, we were able to achieve high yield of high quality. So we were able to have up to 1.9 kilograms per square meter per week for the, 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 the beef tomatoes. And this under, of course, a lot of light, like in Mexico or even here. So, but when we, we grow in that system, we used to have a recirculation of our effluents, even though we don't um, drain a lot. We, 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 during the summertime, we have to. So, and but after one here, we have observed that there is a huge amount of salinity in our growing system. And this is always true for the soil growing um, production. So the buildup of uh, sulfate, uh, chloride, uh, sodium, and so, 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 so we wanted to, 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 to better um, define our system. And also, when we had organic amendment every uh, be monthly, every two weeks, three weeks, we have a peak like this of the EC of uh, our nutrient solution. So we would like to have a flat line to be able to give always the same um, nutrient at our uh, plant. So we have conducted a, a research on, um, on the fertilization management where we had different frequency. So, uh, so we did apply uh, organic amendment every week, every two weeks, every three weeks or four weeks. But for the, the same total amount um, um, per, 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 per crop, which was determined according to the estimated yield that you will get. And it's the way that uh, everyone is doing that. So, and we, we, we uh, did conduct uh, this experiment with cucumbers to cultivar. And what we have seen, and this was a project uh, conducted at the commercial level with Lisa Lafar, who is the largest, well, one of the largest uh, um, organic greenhouse uh, company in Quebec for the same cucumber, cucumber, and tomatoes. So, and, and what we have seen, and so, so we haven't seen any difference when we apply um, our fertilizer every week, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks. We haven't seen no significant difference on the soil microbial activity, on the soil CO2 efflux, so the respiration of the soil, which is a good indication of the activity of the soil. Um, also, the same nutrient availability, no difference in the plant grow yield, and also no difference in the fruit quality. So this means that grow instead of uh, giving uh, fertilizer every week, two weeks, it can go until up to four weeks. But the standard now in the industry is to apply fertilizer maybe every two, two or three weeks, to, to, to be sure. 
And in order to, to, to also to fine-tune our uh, fertilization management, we have conducted, and this is uh, the work of my PhD student, uh, Pierre Paul, um, yeah, who is doing um, did an incubation uh, trial, so incubation trials during one year. And the idea was to, to see what is the, 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 the mineralization rate of the, the most common organic fertilizer that we use. And what is the, the, the impact of this organic fertilizer on the, the, the microbial activities? So for that, we, we used two types of soil. We did uh, our soil incubation with a mineral soil and organic peat-based soil. And for eight types of organic fertilizer. So we had blood meal, pedo meal, alfalfa, shrimp meal, whole truth lads, and also the control without nothing. So, and what we have seen is that the mineralization rate reached a plateau after only 60 days. And this is true for most of our organic amendment. And as you can see here for the mineral soil or the organic soil, so that the, 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 the blood meal, the fetal meal, reach, yeah, uh, the, the, the soap was much uh, higher, and they, they did release much more uh, nitrogen than the, the other one. So, and uh, we can see also that for the alpha male, the alpha male in the first week did uh, immobilize nitrogen instead of um, um, giving uh, nitrogen to, to the soil. So this is the type of data that, that we have got. And with this result, we now develop a model uh, based on NLAS model, which is um, the interface is with Stella. And we want to uh, integrate all this mineralization uh, rate to that model to provide a tool to growers. So if I apply um, how many, well, such a, a, a gram of uh, a nitrogen to my plants with uh, fiddle meal or, or poultry meat or shrimp meal, what will I get um, for my plants and um, to, to, to better synchronize the, 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 the release of the, the nitrogen with the, the plant's um, requirement. So now when we look at the effect of this organic amendment of the microbial communities, we can see here, like in the, 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 um, the mineral soil, that the half alpha increased the microbial uh, diversity of the soil, while the, the blood uh, meal here, uh, as you can see, reduced it. And we haven't seen any significant difference between the control the, the, um, uh, and the, the, uh, the um, shrimp meal and the fidu meals. And if we look at the organic um, uh, substrate, we can see that the, the microbial diversity was higher with the shrimp milk and the poultry manner. So the type of organic amendment that you are giving to the soil has an impact on your microbial community. So this is really, really important. And here is, well, it's, it's maybe a headache <laughs> to look at that, but it's just to give you that the type of fertilizer affect the biochemical properties of your soil, and this will impact to your, um, the, the composition of your bacterial communities. And if, um, and is, is the most important uh, parameters that did affect uh, the microbial um, uh, structure of our soil. And he, he, here you have just a brief uh, summary that in, if you add blood meal and fidu meal, it's, you will get lower uh, microbial, microbial biomass and you will have also lowest bacterial diversity. If you had a shrink meal or poultry meal too, you will have a high bacterial diversity. And when we, you had alpha meal, you will have, well, you will have uh, an intermediate uh, uh, micro meal uh, biomass uh, population. So, and you have many um, parameters and also, and the other, aspect that is really, really important is the pH, the effect of your amendment of the pH, which is related to 
the activity and the, the community of your um, micro um, uh, organism in your soil. Also, in, in, we also look at, at the type of microbial communities that we have uh, seen in our um, uh, trials. So you can see that according to the, the type of organic amendment that I give to the soil, I can have different impact of uh, the, 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 um, the film of the, the bacteria. So, and also it's, it's, it's also true for the functionality of this uh, microorganism. So we are looking not only on their activity population, but also we want to uh, also know the functionality of each microorganism that are in, involved in that system. So, and this is still um, analysis that is going on, and um, I will have more results to show you uh, in the coming here. After that, we also uh, conducted uh, experiments in the granules where we did compare the form of nitrogen. So if you give the, the nitrogen under um, the organic amendment, like blood meal, filler meal, compare to uh, uh, inorganic form of nitrogen. And in that case, we use ammonium nitrate. And we uh, did conduct this experiment for tomato, cucumber, with different nitrogen application rate. And what we and the idea was to 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 say okay I grew in the same way but when I just uh, provide nitrogen in different uh, type of uh, form well organic or inorganic what will what is the impact of my uh, my uh, soil um, microorganism but also plant and quality so what we have seen with that experiment so so, so it. When we use organic nitrogen, we increase the soil uh, respiration rate by 40%. We increase the microbial activity by uh, 27%. We increase the fungi and bacterial uh, abundance, so the quantity, by 70% and um, 23% respectively. We also have a positive effect on the total and soluble carbon and total nitrogen in our soil. And uh, yeah, and we we also, uh, if you look here, we have a, a good impact on the the hurtworms as well. So and when you look at the bacterial and fungi uh, communities, you can see that just by changing the form of nitrogen that you give to your plants will change the whole uh, microbial communities in your system. So, and this is the, the, an example of the microbial composition uh, that we find. So you, you can see here that with the actinobacteria, if we uh, provide uh, under the unorganic form, we had more this actinobacteria. And if for the, the proteobacteria, it's under the organic form. And we, now we are dig digging and trying to, to uh, look at the specific um, bacteria and form, yeah, and see what is the relation with the nitrogen uh, cycles and also with the pathogens or the good guys, the plant grow um, uh, microorganisms. So this is an example of the fungi, the, the microbial composition on fungi that we have um, um, observe in our system. So you can see that Ascomycota is really uh, more in that system. So, so in the inorganic compared to the organic, but that um, the film is more important. And all, all of them are involved in the, the composition of organic matter, uh, biological control, and, and all the, 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 the good aspect that you want to, to have in your system. So n now when you look at the nitrogen form on the, the growth system, we haven't seen any effect on plant growth, yield, uh, and also on the quality of our product, except that we uh, observe a slight increase on, um, on the, the, uh, the uh, carotene with the organic form. So now we also conducted uh, experiments on biochar amendment because I don't know if you know biochar, but it, it, it's, a, it's a, like a charcoal, organic charcoal that we can use as an organic 
amendment to promote the, the activity of the soil and to increase the capacity of the nutrient retention and also water retention. And um, so, so, so we, we say, okay, if we had a uh, biochar in our, our growing system, can I uh, speed up the mineralization rate and promote the good microorganisms? So we have conducted um, uh, three years of project research with sandy soil, sandy loam, loam, mug soil, a mix of peat and compost with clay and a, peat, um, a substrate with soda, peat and compost. And what we have uh, seen after three years uh, of experiments in the same growing uh, system, so we had um, seen no significant effect on biochar, on plant growth, the coal yield, the root mycorrhization, the leaf nutrient content, but we have observed a significant effect on biochar, on but the biological activity of the soil, the bacterial abundance and the riches or diversity of the microbial in our soil, higher soil nutrient content. We also reduced by 30 to 50 percent the nitrogen leaching out our a system, and we were able to reduce the, the free critical cracking, which is uh, was sometimes important. And also, but well, the side effect of that, by um, using our this type of biochar, we reduce the population if our earthworms uh, in our system. So, and also we we also look at the microbial communities according to. Uh, the soil with biochar or without biochar and as you can see here there is an impact if you you look difference between the biochar and the control so you you can see that you can modify the microorganism that you find in your soil so and also because this was made with one type of biochar but Depending on the type or the, 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 the type of biochar that you use, you have different uh, response. So, so, so we have conducted, and this is the, the work of a PhD assistant that I was uh, co-supervising, and this was uh, also in collaboration with Prometech. Um, so we have looked at different, the, the, the impact of different type of biochar on the microbial diversity, nutrient leaching, and, and what we, we have looked is if we replace, um, we had a biochar in our growing system in replacement, like in perlite, we were able to, uh, to, to increase the yield up to 55% uh, with, for a sweet uh, pepper. We were able also to reduce by 50% the fertilization with type affecting the sweet pepper yield, which is, was really, really interesting. We were able also to reduce the leaching of the nitrogen in our system by up to nine, uh, 94% and also for the phosphorus. And we also increased the availability of carbon, which is really um, uh, important for, for uh, the microorganism also. So we, we also observed that by adding um, biochar, as you can see here, we increase the uh, population, uh, the bacterial uh, diversity in our uh, system as well. And here is the attack of the, the, on the plant growth promoting bacteria that we have increased by using uh, these two types of biochar and also um, the biological um, agents that this are um, related to. So just by adding a biochar in your system, you can modify and improve your growing system. And the question was also, what is the difference between the soil and the, the, the growing, growing organically in soil and out of the soil? Is, uh, do you have the same, uh, um, what is the impact on the microbial uh, population and diversity in our system. So we have conducted a metagenomic analysis to compare for uh, tomato, cucumber, and sweet pepper, uh, the, 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 the microbial um, uh, community in tree growing media coming from uh, Mexico and one soil. And we had two growing media and one soil from uh, Quebec and tree growing media and one 
uh, type of soil in Laval University. So we look at that. And what we find is that we, um, we had uh, in the green media, uh, we had more, um, the quantity uh, of bacteria was significant higher than from the, the, the soil. We haven't seen any significant difference for the, the fungi. And if you look at the, the ratio bacteria fungi, of course, we have seen difference because it's related to higher total bacteria. So this was really, really interesting. And also, uh, when you look at um, the diversity of the dominant bacteria and eukaryotes, we have found that there is no uh, significant difference. So we have more um, microbial um, microorganisms, but the diversity was uh, not uh, different. But when you look at the impact of the crop, so we wanted to see if I grow tomatoes, cucumber, and sweet paper, how does it affect the, the microorganism in my soil? And we find that the bacterial diversity was lower in the growing media of sweet paper compared to the one in, the, in the cucumber and tomatoes. So we also look at the, um, the relative, um, well, the impact of, of the, the phyla here, uh, as you can see here. And what we have seen is the relative species proportion of actinobacteria, protobacteria, were significantly higher in the growing media compared to the soil. But on the other side, we also find that this uh, microorganism were higher in the soil. So, so it was different. Um, uh, responses that we, we got. But what was really important is that uh, yeah, now if we, we look at the, 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 the main uh, effect on the, 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 the beneficial uh, species like Sumerodomas and Trichodema, we find it that they were higher in the growing media compared to the soil. But for the pathogen, the bad guys, we haven't seen any significant difference. So this is the kind of um, uh, results that uh, we looked at. And this is really important because we wanted to know what is the main um, factors that impact the composition of the bacteria and the karyotic in our, our system. And what we find is the, 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 the origin, so the management of the, the, the crops uh, explain 54% and 45% of the total variation. So it's more where the sample is coming than the, the way, um, than the, 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 the crop type or the soil type. So the soil type, meaning that going out of the soil or in, in the soil, explain less than 10% of the variability that we have observed. And the country almost, uh, yeah three to five percent. So, so, so it's really uh, the way that you manage your crops that will affect the microbial community of your soil. So after that, we also, well, not after that, but parallel of that, we also conducted some uh, experiments on organic aquaponics. So, so the idea was to, to use the nutrients from the fish effluents that we had and just to gave to our organic growing system because it's not allowed to have aquaponics. So we say, okay, we take the fish plants and we gave to our plants. And what we observe, we observe when we use the fish plant as a nutrient um, to our plants, we have a positive effect on plant weight, leaf area, root biomass. We also observe a higher soil microbial activity and also, um, we observed that fish flora were able to give almost all nutrients except potassium. So we had to add a sulfate of potassium in our green system. And we also observed that by using the fish flora, we were able to suppress the, 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 the petium and the fusarium in our system. So it, this was really interesting. And as um, Marat has mentioned, we also have conducted a um, study on lighting because uh, it's true also for organic crops that during the winter time, we don't have light in our country or part of the, the world. So, and you know, the, 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 
the tomatoes, cucumber, seed paper needs a lot of light. So we um, have conducted a tricanopy lighting with LEDs, as you can see, and we were able to increase the yield by up to 24 percent. And this was an experiment uh, uh, conducted between June to December. And November, December is the lowest uh, uh, lighting period. So, so we were really happy. And we observe, of course, um, a higher photosynthetic rate in our leaves close to the, the lamp. So, and also we have conditions in cucumber uh, and lighting, and we, we have two positions for the LEDs. We put it at 0.7 meter from the, the soil and at 1.4 meter, and we had 80 micromoles per square meter per second of lighting. And what we observed, so, so we were able, well, we were able to, to uh, uh, decrease the internal light uh, better chlorophyll, so it had a good effect on the plant growth. Uh, but uh, and during the, the winter time experiments, we also um, uh, we have not see any effect on, on the grow parameter. So uh, yes, but if you look at the yield that we have uh, um, observed, so by using LEDs at 70 centimeter above the ground, we were able to increase the fruit yield by 14% to 24% uh, uh, according to the cultivars. So, and for the winter experiments, we were able to increase by 16 and 12. So this is, uh, it was really interesting result. And we were able by using actual lighting uh, in our system to increase the firmness of our cucumbers and also uh, the color, the color during the, the, the fall uh, experiments. So if we look at the quality attribute, we were able by using ITRA canopy LED lighting to improve the vitamin C of our uh, cucumbers by up to 40 persons. So, and we also for the winter experiments, observe greater dry matter uh, uh, effect as well. So, and now we, we just start a new project on vertical organic farming. So, and this is in collaboration with the Prometech, uh, Ino Tribe, and also uh, Abri Vegetal, which is uh, growing in the, the province in Quebec. And the idea is to develop a growing media that will suppress disease and also to uh, optimize the LED management for this uh, vertical or, or farm uh, farming, and also, of course, to increase the productivity uh, and the flavor and uh, the nutritive value of our crop is already uh, important. So, and also, uh, we want to 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 to, to uh, evaluate at the end of that project the footprint print of that system compare different systems, but also the profitability. So, and we still keep going on research about the relationship about the soil health uh, the, 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 and the, the, the health of the plants. So this is really important. And for that, we look at all the physical, biological, chemical property of the growing media according to the health of the plants. And we also look at the cultural management. We want to use a lot of biostimulants, ovens, present a result on biostimulant because um, that time is running. <laughs> and, but we did uh, research on with uh, silicone as well, and it's really, really good for uh, cucumbers. And also, we, we look all um, regarding to the productivity and the quality of our uh, product. And it's the integration. We really want to focus on quality because consumers, when they buy organic food, they want to have healthy food nutritive food, and all the quality has an impact, as you know, on the microbiome, you've got microbiome, <laughs> and it's really important for you to, to have healthy people. So, so we try to integrate all the knowledge coming from our um, uh, yeah, uh, research. So in concluding remark, we can say that the organic uh, farming for protected crop, plant factory, greenhouse, uh, under high tunnel, there is a strong market opportunity due to increasing demand for organic vegetables. And there's still a premium value that make it 
highly profitable, but you have to reach high yield, uh, of course. And we we need a lot of research to minimize the production risk in terms of resource management, quality improvement, pest and disease uh, controls as well. And if we look at the organic soil less uh, production, we have to have a high biological activity of our growing media to release nutrients, but also to suppress a disease. And we have to improve the yield, the quality to fulfill consumer demand for uh, this uh, food. We have to contribute to food security by uh, growing on the top of the roof, urban uh, vertical farming. Um, we also have to optimize uh, uh, the, the producer uh, profitability when we design organic growing system. And I'm convinced that by this doing that, we will contribute to a food security. And in terms of food security, we need a lot of research. So all the young people here are interested in the research. So there is a lot to do. And this is the, the 17 sustainable development goals that have been defined. Uh, to protect our planet, but also to fill uh, the people. So, so this can, we, I think, by growing organically, we can contribute to this sustainable development goals. And this is the research team that I was working with. Uh, now I moved to Laval University. Some, some of them are not anymore on my team, but yeah, the PhD students, Pierre-Paul, uh, Vicky, uh, Beatrix, and uh, all the people, and also in a collaboration with Professor of Laval University, Steve Pepin, Annie Antion, Philippe Rochef, Richard Hogg, and a lot of research assistants as well. So, yeah, so. And also, as well, the last slide, as Murat has mentioned, uh, if you are interested with agroecology and organic horticulture, uh, there is a platform, the ISHS platform, where you can get a lot of information. And we have, as you see, several working groups working on organic temperate fruit, organic tropic and subtropic fruits, organic vegetable, greenhouse vegetable, composting, biological control, and you are welcome to join that, uh, um, that ISHS um, society and to, to be a member and an active member of this uh, working group. So thank you very much. And I'm really sorry I was quite quick. Well, yeah, give a lot of <laughs> data in a short time period, but I will really be pleased to answer uh, any of your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Martin. <laughs> much thanks this at the same time. <laughs> great. So, um, yeah, you gave us a world of great information. I'm sure everyone was taking uh, notes here, but I, I believe uh, we have questions too. And, and don't hesitate to contact me uh, if you want to have specific information. Because, yeah, I have a lot of uh, publication on that or report, and I, I can give you a, a lot of information or specific information. Yes, and, wonderful. Uh, I will be really pleased uh, to answer, uh, to, to give you, to send you. Details. Absolutely. Let me have time for a few questions. Yes. I think the consumer yeah. likes to have happy fruit and happy vegetables and things that are healthy to them. And I'm looking at a wonderful presentation and thank you so much for it. The issue here of happy worms swimming around in soil or in other conditional circumstances. And some of them are helping to make happy fruit and vegetables, and others may not be contributing to the ecosystem in a positive yeah. way. Yeah. And many of us who are kind of simplistic, and you know, we see a thing called fertilizer, 5105 being yes. nitrogen, phosphate, and ash, I think. And these are part of the nutrients. Now, how are we looking at the shrimp and the other residues here in terms of artificial soils, what's the best combination to have the happiest fruit, happiest vegetables, happiest worms, yeah. and not the nasty bugs, but yeah. the healthy bugs that are being good yeah. to the roots? Well, it's the goal of this program, research program, and it's really ambitious. 
I mean, by, by doing the, the incubation trials that we, we do, and now um, I, I apply for a grant to look at that, but with plants. So, so we will do it with plants, and not just uh, greenhouse, but, uh, well, uh, tomatoes, but also berries. And we, we have to develop model to, to be able to answer your question, because you don't want to, diversity is good, but with that type of system, that type of soil, maybe too much is too much. <laughs> so you have to, to point uh, specifically which microorganism that you will want to. But for that, it's why we, we, uh, we um, uh, conduct this mitogenomic um, analysis to pin, uh, point out which microorganisms are involved in each type of system and to try to say, okay, if I gave uh, alpha farming, I get this microorganism and this will have this uh, impact on the soil, so uh, you can manage. But I cannot answer your question right now, but I hope that in five years, I will be much better way to answer it. And, and just to, to help growers to know, well, it's it, actually it's like a black box. You, you, you feed with organic amendment, but you don't know exactly what's going on. And we want to, to, to know exactly what is going on. So it's why. And, and the tool to make it is every month there is databases that is improving and gave more uh, answer to our response. Well, no question. Well, yeah, response to our question. So, so, so it's coming. And we are, before we didn't have tools, now we have powerful tools to make it. So, yeah, we, 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 we work on that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read one from on, that came in from online, and I hope I get it right. Thank you for the presentation. I understand that Canada does not allow supplemental lighting or hydroponics to get organic certification. But can those growers who cannot get Canadian cert certification, get USDA certification, and sell their produce to U.S. markets as certified organic. Is this why you are working on organic vertical farming in Lavelle University? Yeah, well, we can use artificial, yeah, we can use artificial lighting, but with, with uh, greenhouse. So we need nat natural light. In plant factory, it's not allowed because we must have artificial lighting. So, so, um, so yeah, it's the standard. So, so we will see if we can modify the, the Canadian standards, uh, if we can grow in, um, in plant factory. Actually, we can grow in plant factory just for uh, microgreen. So if it's 30 days, lower than 30 days, uh, starting at the ambition, water ambition of the seeds, it's okay. But after 30 days, uh, you can you have to be out of the plant factory. So maybe you can move your plants, or I don't know what will be the strategy. But the strategy will be to be allowed to, to use uh, artificial lighting in plant factory for organic. The other part of the question was, can we get USDA uh, organic certification when we produce in Canada? Uh, and to export it, and it's no. We have to get the certification in our country with our standard, Canadian standard. So a grower in Canada actually cannot produce in a USD uh, organic way, uh, USD, yeah, or, and, and to export to, to uh, US. So, so, so it, it's not feasible. It's not allowed. I don't know if I did answer. Well. Thank you. Actually, that question was from our friend and colleague, Cherry Kubota, oh, joining yes. us from uh, Columbus. Oh, yeah. And oh, we are happy to see her joining us. And from here uh, in the CAC classroom, we have about 70 people, and we are sending you our best wishes, Cherry. Yes. Questions? Uh, you spoke about biochar. Yes. Differentiate between biochar and activated charcoal or activated carbon. Effect that you saw with the biochar if you substituted activated carbon yeah, instead. It's not the same. The process is not the same. Yeah, biochar is a pyrolysis. Uh, so, so you, you normally it's uh, above uh, 400 uh, degrees C that at least you can uh, 
you have to um, process and also it's without oxygen and yeah and, and the idea of uh, biochar is to have a yeah, it's a niche for microorganisms. So you don't want to have a nutrients. There is no more, there is nothing uh, nutrients. And, and you have sometimes um, labile carbon, but, but not so much. But it's just that the, the, the biochar provides a niche where you have uh, nutrients retention, water retention, and microorganism is going there, and it's a good environment for them. So, so active is, uh, yeah, charcoal is, uh, yeah, it's not the same at all. And, and the idea is to replace the perlite or expensive uh, components with other components that is more sustainable, and it's a carbon sequestration as well. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so, so but it, it's the, the process. And each biochar is, can be different. It's really the process, the way that you, you reach your temperature the, the, will affect the, the, the properties of your biochar. And it's why when you look at the literature, someone observe uh, some uh, wonderful responses, other nothing, and it's, it's the way that you, you, the, 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 the components, if you, you use pine uh, or maple or even a straw, you will get a uh, different uh, biochar. So, so be really careful about using biochar because you really, the pH um, <laughs> yeah, and the salinity can be really a problem. And so you have to be really careful. And the size, also the particle. You have a fine uh, biochar uh, particle size or coarse. You don't want to, to have too fine uh, components if you're growing media because you will decrease your porosity if you're growing media. So it's just a matter of balance. And, and Rémi knows <laughs> much more than, than we have about biochar. So yeah, yeah. So, so um, from a primitive. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Well, I have a big bag of charcoal for cooking. Yeah, don't do that. You will kill your plants. Oh. Because you do. Uh, first, which you know if your biochar is good, take in your hand. If your hand is black, don't touch. <laughs> don't put in your green media. When you, you take biochar, it should be a clean uh, hand because if not, you have all compounds, uh, not the uh, toxic compound, phytotoxic compound, because the, the, the temperature was not uh, high enough or the process was not uh, good enough to remove the phytotoxics from that. Uh, yeah, but it's another thing. <laughs> what, what, what you want with biochar is just as, uh, like inert in a, a way. Um, that they, they will be stable, they won't uh, decompose as, uh, well, as sawdust, but yeah, no, no, but no, it just, you have phytotoxicity, not, yeah, but you know, charcoal can be phytotoxic for you as well. You have to eat a lot of broccoli to bypass the bag of charcoals on your, your uh, hamburger. Yes, yes, yes. Question? You can, we, not for, for fruit and vegetable, but with uh, the, 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 the fat of the, the meat and the charcoal is not a good mix for health. So you can have, uh, you can have, but but you have to eat vegetables to just balance. Yeah. Question, <laughs> this question, is question, topic. <laughs> question in the back row. In the United States, a lot of the small growers don't even bother with organic certification from the USDA. They use third-party certifications. Yeah. There's yeah. a variety of organizations. Yeah that provide that um, to satisfy the demand by millennials. And, and we have those in Canada too. Then why, I don't understand what the big deal is about whether or not the Canadian government. Cross the border, you need a certification. Trump won't allow that. Yeah, I know, we have in the big trouble in Canada, you know. And we are so teeny. <laughs> but no, no, but uh, I mean, it, this is good. It's just when you, uh, in Canada, or well, in Canada, if we want to cross province to province, you need the, the organic certification. So, but if you sell on local market, you don't, uh, well, in, in Quebec, you need it. Uh, yeah, well, in Quebec, it's really straight. You, 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 well, you need it. Not if, yeah, if you want to, to, to sell 
with a logo, but you can have your own uh, uh, consumers buy in at your farm. And what is really, really popular is, is uh, the box, uh, food box, Hashem, that we have. So, so uh, you don't need a certification because people, the consumer, trust you. So, so the idea of the certification is just when you, you want to sell to, 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 to other provinces or, 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 or country or a huge market like uh, Costco, Walmart, they, they, they need a label uh, to, to, to sell it organically. So, but, but for small farms, they don't need at all. They, they have the trust with the consumer, consumer go or they, they deliver a box, a uh, food box, and it's okay. And I will say in, in the world, most in the, in the world, uh, in developing countries, they don't care about standards. It's North American and European country who care about standards because it's a trade uh, agreement. And we have equivalency with uh, uh, the certification with other countries. So it's, it's business. Okay, I've got, I'm going to bring in another one from online here. And said, you said the diversity of microorganisms is related to crop management and location. What, what is the source of the microbes? Is it the media, soil, equipment, uh, additives? Well, the, 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 micro, the inoculation has come from manure. Manure, uh, yeah, all the, the, the shrimp, meal, feed of meals, uh, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, there is microorganisms everywhere, but but yeah, uh, but it's coming from the uh, amendment. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you compare to conventional uh, growing system, so like rock wool or it's so 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 it's mm -hmm. it's inert system. In organic farming, we, we use living material, so so it's coming from that. Yeah. Uh, Martin, where does bioinformatics and data science? Um, to uh, mine this data to help support the development in the organic horticulture. Hmm. You mean all the results? Or? The, the bioinformatics, the oh, data sciences, because yeah. it well, seems well, like there are there a lot there of... Is, uh, I can uh, give you the data. The, the, yeah, yeah, the, there is a huge database. And, and yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and all the people are, yeah, yeah. There is a database for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, wonderful. Another question. We have a few minutes. So take your chance, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, Billy's microphone. Okay. Uh, the bacteria you were talking about, are some of those uh, symbiotic and help uh, give nutrients to the plants? Yes. And take from the plants and they live together? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, it, it's an exchange. Huh? The plants by their roots will g give some uh, uh, carbon components to the microbe, um, microorganism in the soil and in exchange the microorganism take care <laughs> of the plants by giving, uh, yeah, it can be to protect by a different way, but it, it's, um, yeah. Can you supplement the good bacteria? Yeah, well, biostimulant, which is really, really uh, popular these days, it's uh, people market some cocktail with like uh, uh, bacillus or pseudomonas or uh, uh, and trichoderma. So, so you can buy on the market good microorganisms that have been uh, shown to, to have a positive effect. But this is working really well for conventional growing system because you have a inert um, environment. There is not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, a guys around. It, when you, you try to, to provide uh, biostimulants, or uh, yeah, we call it PGPR, uh, to, to uh, uh, organic growing system, it's already full of microorganisms. So it's difficult to, well, we don't really know yet, and we are working with that, how I will modify my uh, microorganism by applying external uh, uh, microbes. So, so because they're already there. So and if they are there is because the, the, the chemical, the physical properties of the soil fit well with them. So, so, and, uh, and also it's tricky. I, I'm not a microbiologist, so I'm a plant physiologist. So 
but you have to have the, the, the right combination between like uh, uh, bacteria and fungi. They, they have a synergic effect. Right? And it, it's not just one dye that has a positive effect. Some of the time, it's a cocktail. And it's, 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 it's a complex system. Mm -hmm. So like mycorrhizum, if you have a mycorrhizum, some guy will help, some, some other uh, bacteria can help. Uh, to, 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 to have a good uh, mycorrhization of the root or the performance. So, so it, it, it's really complex. Okay. But by chance, yeah, we are getting to have nice tools to, to look at that. A lot of that actually like went into what I was going to ask, um, you know, being an organic, uh, an organic uh, soilless like media production seminar is asking or I may have missed it and I apologize if I did, but I was wondering if uh, you guys, like what the horizon looks like for like you were just talking about all of the microbiome, like the micro, you know, the, the bio life in the media, um, how a lot of it's present in the physical properties of yeah. like the media you're using. I was curious what the future for like compost teas and like you were just talking yeah. about like a lot of additions that, you know, specialists would create. Um, and I imagine you'd go third party for them, um, at least where the industry currently sits. What's the like... Stand, uh, what's the standpoint right now? Like, what's like, what's the future looking like for compost teas at like an industrial level for this type of production? Yeah, well, I, I think compost tea can be really useful. Yeah, is it currently um, being like heavily researched across? Like, you know, I'm, uh, I actually haven't. I know we actually just recently started a, a yes, uh, something yes, here, yes. And but I think we have to look what is in the compost tea because the compost tea will, will, will it, yeah depending on what is the component that you use it and the oxygen that you give and, and all the, 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 it will modify your, 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 your compost tea. But yeah, so, 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 so you have to, 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 yeah, to, to look at that. But by, by getting more information about, uh, well, like the poultry menu and all the, the, the organic amount and what, we take it one by one, and after that, we will put all together to see and make compost tea with that and see what will be the effect. But until now, I think people just, yeah, and there is a lot of uh, compounds where they add uh, humic acid and all, all, a lot. Now we, we, we find it's a cocktail, so, so you have everything in that cocktail. And when you, you do uh, compost tea, it's, it's similar than that. So, so uh, but each compost tea is different if you don't have the same uh, components. So, so uh, yeah, it's, it's not so simple. Uh, and of course, when you buy it, uh, so, so the process, it's a standard process, so they always take the same components or almost the same, so you can say, okay, I should get about always the same uh, uh, type of components, but yeah, but you know, with that thing, it, it's like um, liquid uh, uh, fertilizer, organic fertilizer. You cannot. What, what is the the, the 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 quality when you put your your reservoir, your tanks, uh, for one month? So you buy it, you don't know how long it was on the the the, the, the store, and now I put there. There is the sun. There is. So oh, it's living material. So, so what is going on that? So when I apply to my plants, maybe I, yeah. So, so, so uh, yeah, it's living things. <laughs> so, so, so it's it's modifying all the time. So it make it more difficult to study and to get uh, a right answer. Yeah. <laughs> so. Good. We're back. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, let's give her a big uh, round of applause. <laughs> I know there are a lot of questions, uh, but hopefully uh, we can follow up with her, and then you can approach her and ask your questions. So thank you so much yeah, again. Great pleasure. And and it's this was one of that um, uh, record-breaking participation, and I oh, just yeah. heard that we had another 40, 50 participants from the oh, web. So yeah. it's amazing. So wonderful to see you all, the CAC family and our CA enthusiasts here and also for joining us from the webinar. Uh, please come back again on October 26th. We, we will have another Covering Environment seminars. And thank you all being here and thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you. everyone. All right. Yeah.
Uh, please take some of these produce. 